Prophetess Sarah Sylvie Django, Divine Revelation of Hell and Heaven. The Surprise of Seeing the Pope in Hell The Lord then showed me where the famous Pope John Paul II was being held, surprised, I asked him to explain to me the presence of this great man of God in these places, the Lord made me understand that this man did not repent of his serious faults, but Lord, was this Pope not preaching to the crowd? I replied, he replied, despite this, he was not telling the truth and that, although he knew it perfectly, he did not warn his followers of the reality of hell, he was lying to them telling them that everyone who is Christian, baptized by sprinkling, would inherit paradise, he simply preferred money to the salvation of souls, a thorny tree branch circled the Pope's neck and wrapped around him like a snake, he struggled to get rid of it, in vain, he was shouting, Jesus, help me, have mercy on me, get me out of here. He expressed his ardent desire to return to earth in order to have a second chance to repent. But Christ answered him that it was too late, that he had to realize that, on earth, he was fully informed of the reality of this place and that now there was no recourse for him. The Lord took the opportunity to remind me of Ephesians 5 to 5 for this you know, that no fornicator, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God, then Jesus showed me the film of the Pope's life, we saw how he sat on his earthly throne, I saw distinctly how he celebrated mass, the crowd stood in admiration before him, Jesus told me to observe how this place was filled with idolatry and he declared, but idolatry will not save, it is I who am the only one way, truth and life. There is no other way to be saved except to come to me, the Lord told me again, my daughter, I love the sinner but not the sin, tell mankind that I love them and that they must all come to me, while the Lord was speaking, I continued to watch the film of the life of the Pope and saw how this man had been rich, I saw him get a lot of money but he did not share it with those around him, I also saw him sleeping with nuns and many other women, I said to the Lord that for my part and despite my human nature, I managed to abstain and I did not understand that when we really love God, we cannot change our habits and make efforts to control ourselves, the Lord answered me then that abstinence was a matter of spiritual maturity, I expressed to the Lord my disagreement with the prayers of the Pope but I told him that on earth, nevertheless, he had been a good man of God with strong faith, moreover, John Paul too had been beatified, this was proof that all considered him an exceptional person, the Lord replied, sometimes appearance is deceptive and I look at the heart, regardless of social rank or fame, I alone decides who is sanctified, so I understood that it was not for humans to prejudge holy things and that only God possessed the power to search hearts and kidneys, finally, the Lord showed me the rest of the Pope's life and exhorted me in this way, you will henceforth go to the people, priests, and the new Pope to tell them it's time to come to me whether they are wealthy or not, I asked the Lord, why is the Christian media not telling the truth by saying that John Paul II is in paradise? Jesus answered me, behind the Christian media is the spirit of the Antichrist, these media do not highlight the values of God but what is subtly harmful to man, I told the Lord, I don't understand the reason why these same media never spoke of you as the Savior, Jesus replied, it was because they were not from me. He asked me to look again at the earth. It was easy to see that despite all his works, the truth that he had revealed was not taught to the faithful, on the contrary, they were immersed in ignorance. Michael Jackson in hell then Jesus invited me to look in another cell and declared, the prisoners who are here have deliberately refused to believe in the word of God, they thus chose their master, the devil, that is why they find themselves here, the sight of this cell was striking. We could see people with deformed faces covered in vermin, others who desperately tugged at their disgusting skin, still others, consumed by fire, screamed and ran around to put out the fire, seeing Jesus, they cried out. Jesus, save us, have mercy on us. But Jesus replied that it was too late, that he could do nothing more for them because they had refused to listen to his envoys on earth, the Lord informed me that many celebrities, Famous people and important like Michael Jackson have followed the ways of hell, on earth, 
This world-famous singer had devoted himself to Satanism and instead of using the gift he had received to glorify his creator, he had used it to capture the glory of the world, of course, not all people could know this reality, they could not have known that he had made a pact with the devil in exchange for great fame. My surprise was therefore great to see this singer in these places, he was persecuted by demons who, while imitating his movements, forced him to dance the famous moonwalk while shouting praise at them, I even saw a demon who amused himself by walking on people in the manner of the artist, he rejoiced at the anguish of his victims, like all others, Michael Jackson uttered heart-rending cries of anguish and distress and begged the Lord to take him out of this place, startled I cried to the Lord that I myself loved his music and therefore asked him if he could do anything for him, but the Lord, as to his habit, replied said that it was too late and that it was on earth that he had to repent instead of choosing to worship the devil, he advised therefore to give up his music because it was a real trap for everyone, the children's cell in another cell, I saw with terror, children tormented by fire including a little boy of eight or nine who cried, Lord, have mercy on me, get me out of here. I asked therefore to the Lord the reason why they found themselves in this place despite their young age, the Lord then showed me the film of the short life of this boy, on the giant screen, we could clearly see the child enjoy watching cartoons, soap operas and films that were none other than satanic instruments intended to defile the world and pervert the children, Jesus said to me, look how it made that little boy rebellious and disobedient to his parents, unfortunately, he was in a car crash, his deliberate choice to feast on this kind of distraction led him to hell. Ephesians 6 to 1 for children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right, honor your father and mother, this is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. The child dishonored his parents by identifying with what he saw in the screenplays from movies and cartoons. This is why parents must teach their children from an early age as it is recorded in Proverbs 22-6 Train up a child in the way he should go, even when he is old he will not depart from it, my brother in hell. After this discussion, I implored the Lord to reveal to me whether someone from my family was in these places. My surprise was great when he brought me near a small cell, dark and far from the others, he said to me, now look at that person, is he really from your family? Do you recognize your brother? I was distressed and fear gripped me, suddenly in approaching the entrance of this cell, I recognized my brother, Jean-Pierre who cried and cried. He was very thin and his lips were dry as when he was hospitalized, at this time, he had a stomachache and told me that doctors failed to make a diagnosis, he was very afraid of dying, so I prayed and made him realize that his conduct was bad and totally at odds with biblical principles. Panicked, he begged me to pray to my God to save him from hell, I had then prayed in faith and my half-brother had listened to my prayer, after that, I asked him to implore the forgiveness of God and imposed hands on him, alas, this did not stop the evil in him, some time later, he died without anyone knowing the origin of his illness, and here I find him in hell, begging me to help him, he implored me by saying to me, help me, my sister and tell the Lord to take me out of here, don't leave me in this hot place, intercede for me cause I know that you live for him, I beg my sister's forgiveness, so I asked the Lord if I could do something for my brother because I knew that he was a righteous God and that he would advise fairly, unlike humans, his response was very clear, my daughter? Do you know what your brother was doing? Yes, you yourself know, he is there because he was stealing money from the purses of people, among them, to cite just this case, a grandmother who had nothing left to eat, this poor woman started screaming desperation and she turned out to be my daughter, despite many warnings, your brother showed no mercy or repentance seeking to come back to me, now it's too late, I can do nothing more for him, church member in hell we walked over to an aged woman whose body disappeared under the flames, on examining her more closely, she reminded me of someone I had known formerly, her fame was very great and her pride had no equal, moreover, she possessed great wealth and was very selfish, giving no regard to others, 
She stared at Jesus with hatred and her wrath accentuated the hardness of her features, Jesus expressed himself thus, My word in the Gospel of John says, I, the light, am come into the world, so that whoever believes in me does not remain in darkness, at that moment, my memory came back and reminded me of the details of this woman, she had been dead a few years ago but when she was alive, she attended a church which I also attended before the Lord advised me to find another, this woman did not hesitate to hurt the people around her, even little children said they had heard this woman blaspheme saying, cursed be God, turning again to me, the Lord said to me, as you can see, Jezebel is also sitting in churches and she seduces her victims by all possible means and strategies, it is therefore good that you remember having known this person because thus you can relate the consequences of her behavior to the fate she suffers in hell, Jesus said to me, this woman, during her lifetime, knew the holy scriptures enough to put them into practice, but now she is in hell instead of ending up in heaven with me, he concludes by telling me. The lesson to be learned from this is that he or she who does not repent and respect my commandments until the end of their existence will not inherit the kingdom of heaven, Serena in hell. After that, the Lord led me to another woman and said to me, come closer and look at this woman, I present to you the musician Serena, when we approached her, Serena cried out, Lord, have mercy, forgive me and set me free, but the Lord looked at her and said, it's too late. You no longer have here the possibility of repenting, desperate, she turned to me and begged, go talk to the people so that they don't come here, she also asked me to tell everyone who plays, sing or even listen to her satanic music, to refrain from it, taken aback, I asked her why, she replied that each time someone on earth played, sang or listened to one of her pieces of music, it increased her pain and accentuated her torments and that in addition, she now knew that when they acted thus, they were sure to come to hell, she repeated to me that I had to give them an account of her horrible situation in this place and the terrible reality of that place, while she was talking to me, I saw demons pierce her body with swords, despite her immense pain, she found the strength to cry out to Jesus to help her and to have pity on her, alas, it was too late, servants of Christ in heaven come on, I'll show you another place he told me, so we joined another part of the kingdom of heavens and came to a garden where a crowd of young people was gathered, the Lord said to me, my daughter, I present to you my servants and my disciples, the people I saw were known in the Bible and I was surprised to find that they all had retained their youth, among them, a man waved a handkerchief and whirled around, Jesus then explained to me that this young man was David, his servant, and he was glorifying the Father. He also pointed out to me Joshua, Moses, Abraham and Paul, a bit further away, I also saw two women whom Christ introduced to me as being his servants, Mary Magdalene, and Sarah, he called them all by their names and all bore the same expression of tranquility, finally, Jesus introduced me to a woman who had for him a special place, my daughter, here is Mary the one who gave birth to me. I inform you that she is absolutely unaware of the idolatry of which she is the object on earth, go denounce all these lies and all these abominations, I fell to his feet crying and uncovered for the first time, since the beginning of the visit, the scars caused by the nails of his crucifixion, I was surprised that Christ preserved in these places the stigmata of his torment and asked him if they would ever disappear, he answered me, also showing me his hands that these traces remained visible in order to bear witness to his sacrifice for the salvation of mankind and that they would only disappear when all the saints were gathered here in paradise, Pastor Selvaraj Rajia barely had I had time to see all these famous characters in the Bible and to see the stigma too of Christ that already Jesus introduced me to two angels, charged to show me another celestial place. The angels welcomed me and brought me to a magnificent golden chariot harnessed to two horses with brown robes, they helped me to settle in, sat down in their turn, next to me and made sign to the two celestial horsemen who escorted us to leave, the angels told me that we were on our way to a place where dwellings, instead of being the sumptuous residences in which might have expected in such a place, were in reality only simple garages, 
During the short ride the angels told me about the importance of evangelism on earth. They also referred to the seven requirements for construction materials of our heavenly house, first, acts of worship and praise to God, then, time to read the Bible, devote yourself to prayer, give your time to evangelize humans, to do offerings to the Lord, pay your tithe of obedience to God and finally, spend time in church service in any way. Finally they explained to me that we have come to this part of the heavenly kingdom where the residents were saved as through fire and were not like those who, by their obedience to the divine precepts had been faithful to the end. Then, after half an hour's journey, the team stopped in front of a small village. The angels, after helping me get off the chariot, led me to a sort of garage. The interior was disgustingly filthy, pigeons fluttering from corner to corner of the building through here and there their disgusting droppings, covering thus the floor of stinking stains. The men who were there, didn't seem to care, beyond measure, I was trying to understand who these people were when suddenly I was amazed to recognize a large number of pastors and men of God, among them, Selvaraj Regia, who on earth was a famous pastor in numerous countries, he recognized me in his turn and asked me courteously if I was fine, I couldn't help but exclaim. But what are you doing here, in a place like this? He then confessed to having committed serious embezzlement during his pastoral exercise. I recalled my visit during the course of the year 2000, which I remembered perfectly. He then instructed me to inform his wife of the place and living conditions he was facing and wanted me to warn her against possible reprehensible actions. I told him how sorry I was to find him in this place especially since I knew the gravity of his situation during his lifetime, Jesus had already shown me the way he, like so many pastors, behaved, urging me to warn him so that he repented, but I was surprised that Selvaraj Regia did not talk to me about his first wife, the mother of his children, he confessed to me then that it was she who had pushed him to commit the sins that had precipitated him in this place but that at this hour there was no more room for resentment, he also asked me to inform his children of his inglorious situation, they had to change their perspective on heavenly things and struggle faithfully to reflect the glory of God in their lives. He also wanted that I can testify to them of the grace that Jesus had given me to be his prophetess. They had to be able to believe what I would tell them about this place dedicated to the servants of God and about the pastors in the garages saved as through fire. I was preparing to take my leave of him when he insisted on telling me about his widow, Dorothy Regia. He repeated vigorously that it was imperative that his widow change her way of teaching and that she had to focus more than ever on how to inherit the kingdom as well as on the imminent coming of Christ. He wanted his widow to take to preaching on forgiveness, flight from sin repentance, the unconditional love of Jesus that was to be reflected in the life of every Christian, the wonderful reality of paradise and the infinitely sad one of hell, moreover, since it would then be warned of the inglorious place he was forced to live in, she had to preach the way to be saved normally and not like through fire, the rapture of Christians and the period of tribulation I left the garages and joined the Lord who was waiting for me to show me a movie projected on a big screen, you could see there all parts of the world simultaneously, all of a sudden, an extraordinary phenomenon occurred, I could not believe my eyes, multitudes of people literally disappeared from the surface of the land, children, pregnant women who cried out of distress at the sudden disappearance of their babies, a whole world was passing out without my understanding the reason, the panic had invaded the streets and thousands of people were running from one place to place, shouting, but it is not possible, it is not true, what is happening then? I saw and recognized some people who, although knowing the ways of the Lord, realized that they were left behind, they were screaming and wanted to kill themselves but couldn't, the Lord said to me, my daughter, on this day, death will flee from humans, because as the book of Revelation 9-6 tells us, during those days men will seek death and will not find it, they will want to die but death will flee from them. Accidents were happening all over the planet, and although some people were injured, none would die. I saw the distraught people, running from place to place and not knowing what to do. Magazines and TV news all reported on the coming of Jesus. The Lord then said to me, My daughter, look at what way these events are going to happen. 
and I saw people distraught who called Jesus to come back and get them, others stood there wondering if he was coming back, others again, asked forgiveness and although the Lord had not taken them, they continued to beg him, shouting, hey, and me, bring me with you please. But the Lord told me in an intense emotional voice, now, my daughter, tell the world to seek me while there is still time, alas, not everyone will go with the Lord Jesus, but only those who do his will, when these events arise, there will be no more opportunities for anyone and it will be too late for all those who have missed the rapture, Jesus ordered me again, go tell them, my daughter, warn them so that it is known throughout the world, give them an account of the terrible things that are brewing, relentlessly proclaim the reality of hell, unfortunately, many will not believe it, do not be tired of saying either that idolaters will never inherit the kingdom of heaven, that it is a serious sin to bow down in front of a statue, of this, it is imperative that they repent as quickly as possible, tell them again that Mary is totally unaware of the idolatry of which she is the object, let them know that only God can be worshipped and glorified, no more Mary or Saint Gregory or others. Three times the Lord reminded me that he was the only saviour for many believers are victims of deception, little do people know what is hidden under the guise of this or that saint that they pray to, a demon takes his place, thus empowered, he disguises himself as an idol, thus misleading those who put their confidence in him, excerpts from Prophetess Sarah Sylvie Jango's Divine Revelation of Heaven and Hell.